Hi class, I wanted to take a few minutes. Um, I received uh, some emails. People were having a little bit of trouble, I think, finding some uh, research. So I thought I would take a few minutes and kind of quickly run through a the process, I guess, of, of the research. And I thought I would start back with um, the actual prompt. So the idea is um, part one of the book, of outliers, um, Malcolm Gladwell makes the point or right, tries to convince us that no one, right, not even rock stars like the Beatle or um, uh, some billionaires, right, have, have uh, gotten to where they've made it to without some sort of opportunity. So these are all claims that come from that chapter, right? that um, he makes and I wanted you to take one of these claims and defend it or argue against it or maybe qualify it and qualify it simply means right um, rather than say we make rules that frustrate achievement right you may say well we make rules that sometimes frustrate achievement especially when it comes to but up but up right so you're kind of qualifying it it's probably the best thing to do i mean you don't have to do this for this assignment but you know in part of the purpose of a liberal a liberal arts education right it is to um produce citizens who think critically right and i think one way to think critically is to avoid using generalizations right such as these and that's where you know qualifying an argument's going to come in and it's something that you'll probably work on when you get to english 103 and things like that but for this assignment um you don't have to but if you want to great um so let me scroll down a little bit our focus question for this assignment right is how much or how little does opportunity play a role in success again you don't have to agree with gladwell you could argue against it that's fine um so i just thought i would take us through this scenario here and you know this is kind of like a brainstorm a brainstorm answer and i just realized i made a typo opportunity plays a huge role in success and sometimes even the seemingly small opportunities produce big dividends all right and the claim that i took from up here right, was um, we prematurely write people off as failures, right, so then I sketched out a thesis statement, right, that was trying to be a little more focused than that, right, our focus on the mystique of the self-made successful person has blinded us to the fact that most, if not all, successful people were given or received by chance an opportunity that set them apart from others, and as a result, we prematurely write people off as failures. So notice how I basically created a, a um, I guess we can call this a compound construction, right? I used the semicolon here to join these two ideas. Now, this would be considered, this is a um, an, uh, an open thesis statement. And what I mean by open is it doesn't list some of you are used to the idea of writing that five paragraph model where you list your points, right? Point A, point B, and point C. You can do that if you want. Um, I don't do that in this one, but I, I try to make it, matter of fact, I should put more focused. So this is, so this example here is a more focused, right? It's the same claim, right? We prematurely, <clears throat> write people off as failures. And this is most evident in people who come from broken homes. Now, I thought of this because in my class at Delta, somebody wrote an essay about how our society, um, and I'll write this down, our society tends to um, cast off prematurely. Um single mothers, for instance. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. Um, okay. So that's something that you might want to think about. 
Okay, and then, you know, I, I started brainstorming some keywords that might work with this sort of play. And I thought, you know, especially thinking of the term broken um, homes, um, I thought about, okay, well, you know, which keywords from the chapter would this um, would work here? And that's one of the reasons why that I had you do that assignment. So I thought of, okay, a concerted uh, cultivation, innate talents. Accomplishment of natural growth, uh, practical intelligence. So if you recall, most of these, if not all of them, come from that, that two-part chapter, right? When they talk about Christopher Langan, right? Because Christopher Langan was raised much differently than, his name's escaping me, Robert Oppenheimer did, right? So now we have our keywords, and we would want to use these keywords to conduct our research. Okay, so for the research, let's see. I thought I'd take you through the process. Um, again, like I said, there were a few people that were having problems. Um, and I might have put a video on there that shows how to log on to the Delta College databases. But MJC is a little bit different. And I um, posted the, the video that they have on their website but still though let's go ahead and go through the process um let's see i usually start um, up in the right hand corner i'll click on library um at some point i'm probably going to have to log in and you will too it's basically i'm pretty sure just the same information that you would use to log in on your email since we are off campus um once i'm here i click on the articles in uh, databases link and let's see where that takes us. And I like, um, you know, you can narrow your search by subject. But I usually start with the general one. And I will go down here to uh, the academic search complete. Click on that. And let's see if it prompts me to log in. Okay, it didn't prompt me to log in because I think I'm already logged in. Um, and... Let's see what we got here. I was taught to use these uh, Boolean search terms, and there are three kinds. Um, let me uh, go back here and show you real quick. So let's say we wanted to search for concerted intelligence. and success, right? All right, if you do that, that means that you are wanting your sources to have both of these words, right? They have to have, they must have both of these words. If you do the same thing, but put the word or, right? Then you're probably going to get more hits because you're you're telling the um, the uh, system that you want sources that have either one of these. And if you use the word not, then you are telling the system that you want um, sources that have this word but not success. You know, think of um, uh, maybe you were doing some sort of research on cannabis, right, or uh, marijuana, and, and um, you kept finding um, sources that said marijuana and uh, legalization, you know, back when that was a hot topic and you don't want that. You would want, you know, somehow uh, to filter that out. Then you would put marijuana and not a legalization. So let's just, um, let's grab onto this concerted intelligence and let's go back and see what we can search for. Plug that in. So, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to put this in. Insert. See, yeah, I changed that. I don't want to capitalize that. Look, it already comes up. Um, concerted cultivation and adolescent psychology over time mediation of parent-child conflict. Hmm, that sounds interesting. I'm going to go, right? Rather than do those uh, Boolean search terms, I'm going to um, click on that and see what happens. All right. Um, I want to narrow it down. What do we have? Uh, one, uh, 1,300, that's actually not a lot. Um, I'm going to narrow it down to scholarly peer journals. All right now we're down to 1,200. I clicked on that. Uh, 
and I want to narrow it down to academic journals, but I think I've already done that. So there are many ways to fine tune your um, search. I only want, okay, I make sure it's full text. Um, parenting and out of school music participation. All right, let's just take a look at it. Um, all right, so we were gonna take a look at this article about music participation. And remember, the first thing we wanna do is take a look at the abstract. Uh, let's see, let's just skim this abstract. So it looks like this researcher w was looking at this idea of consult concerted cultivation, right, which is a parenting style that Gladwell talks about in chapter five, and she wanted to break it down by race, by uh, the expectations that parents have, by race or socioeconomic status. Um, let's see. I found a community youth. Da -da -da -da. So it looks like this researcher found a distinction that that these practice right that that uh parental practices don't matter as right we shouldn't look at it by race race or ethnicity or social status right it, it it's too general to make these kinds of assumptions because she says here that they operate at a network level. Now that might be something to come back to, right? So I would, you know, might want to hang on to this article, but let's skip down a little bit to the, the, um, the discussion, things like that, or the implications. Uh, let's see. It might be something. What is the outcome? Maybe right here. Um, so this, so it looks like they're they're summing up the idea of Laro's concerted cult cultivation, right? That, so the idea is that a middle class middle class children learn to develop the, these skills, right? Right, much like uh, Robert Oppenheimer, and, and they value an individualized self of sense, and this is this is very important, right? It helps them to navigate through their lives. Um, so this is the difference that she found here, right? Results of this study suggest that children's self-expression and self-confidence were indeed important. However, parents and caregivers were at least as likely to expect their children should learn. So it looks like there, she found a little a discrepancy in this generalization made by Leroux, and that's based up. But this was only a small sample size. I'm going to go keep that in mind, but I would like to head back to something. You know, let's take another look. What about this one? Parenting priorities and pressures. Oh, I, I think I've actually come across this one before. So let's read the abstract here. So it looks like um, this, the people that wrote this paper are are suggesting that it is a good idea, right, to to engage in this um, parental style. Let's let's skip down a little bit to the discussion. See, we have also argued that we are moving towards the normalization of concerted cultivation as a parental strategy for all. And as a result, there is a risk that parents not able to or willing to engage in such activities will be positioned as offering inadequate parenting. So, right, so notice how I just kind of skim that. So this is obviously a pro concerted cultivation article. Um, and I think, you know, going back to our 
idea, right, that we prematurely um, cast people off as successful, I think we could talk about this and we could use this article. So hopefully that helps, right? So kind of narrow down your claim. What key terms are you going to use and go from there? Thanks for listening.